Welcome back to the Sticky Art Channel. If you're new here, my name is Justin, and in this video, I'm gonna show how to make your very own infinite art gallery using the app Endless Paper on the iPad. And I also wanna go over some of the pros and cons of this app before you go straight to the App Store and download it, just because this app used to be free and now is a $10 app. And that being said, there are some things with this app that it does really, really well, such as being able to zoom in and zoom out relatively smoothly Compared to a lot of other vector-based art apps, when you zoom in and out, it takes a second or two for it to re-render. Here, it looks like it almost renders in real time. While the app definitely lives up to its name of being able to infinitely zoom, there's a lot of other ways that this app just kind of falls flat. And the fact that it doesn't have a lot of features that come standard and even free drawing apps that are currently available. One of the biggest things is gonna be the brushes that are included are just four different brushes and only one of them has pressure sensitivity and the pressure sensitivity is questionable at best. And at the time of making this, the only adjustment that you can make to the brushes is gonna be the size of it. There's not any other adjustments such as smoothing or any other of the features that are in most other art apps. This definitely makes it a challenge and definitely somewhat frustrating to draw straight lines. To get started with the one point perspective for the Infinite Art Gallery, I drew a square or a rectangular square and then four lines going towards the corners of the iPad and to the center point. On top of the fact that there are not smoothing options for the brushes, there also is not a snapping feature or having the ability to kind of hold the pencil and have it snap and be a straight line, just like in Procreate or a lot of other apps. And that being said, that is something that is in the beta and will be coming out, but there's a lot of things that are also not included in the app that I really think should come standard, such as the ability to select drawings or parts of a drawing and be able to adjust them after the fact. The way it is currently, if you make a line or draw something that you don't like, you just have to do the undo button and then redraw it. And there's not a way to adjust individual points or nodes. The other issue that only seems to be an issue with the pressure sensitive brush is the fact that when you draw with it and zoom in, there's some splits or kind of these bands that are created. And it seems to happen even more the faster you draw with the pen. This issue can be reduced a little bit just by slowing down a little bit when making lines, as well as zooming in a little bit more when making the lines and also using a smaller brush size. Now that the lines are drawn in for the wall, ceiling, and floor for the gallery, I'm gonna come back and add some canvases on the wall. And to do this, all I'm gonna do is draw a line straight up and down vertical. And once I have the line for the height of the canvas in, I'm gonna use the vanishing point and draw a line directly from the vanishing point out And this is gonna give it the 3D effect. So when zooming in and out, it looks like it is coming towards. And once I have those lines in, I'm just gonna draw another line straight down and then clean up the extra lines using the eraser. And if you wanted to have a bunch of canvases that are all the same size, you could actually just follow the same vanishing points inwards and just keep going out. But instead, I decided to make mine a little bit different sizes. And for this one, I'm gonna actually split it in two but you can play around with different size canvases as long as the lines going up and down are vertical and the lines coming towards you are going towards the vanishing point. It'll look pretty good. And it's not gonna be perfect lines. If you are looking for an app that does perfect lines, this app is gonna drive you crazy. However, I just try to do it with the best of my ability to keep it kind of consistent and keep the lines so they look kind of like a cartoon style. I also drew some circle canvases in my gallery and this can be a little bit of a challenge just because they're not perfect circles. The side that is coming towards us is going to be bigger, and the side going away is a little bit smaller. And this can be pretty hard to do in one stroke. However, I tried this a few times and was able to get a couple that I liked. And another trick to add a little bit more dimension to the gallery is adding gallery style canvases. And this can be done just by adding a little bit of thickness to the canvas drawing some lines that go inwards towards the wall and another line that goes straight vertical following the line of the canvas. Once you have the basic lines and foundation for your art gallery, in, you'll wanna make a bookmark. You can do this by hitting the red icon on the top left and then the plus sign and then naming your gallery. And I'm gonna name this one gallery two since I already have a gallery one in here. And what this is is pretty much like a save location in the endless paper so that you can kind of hop around to different points on your endless paper and you can see just by zooming out they are right next to each other but i'm able to kind of hop to different ones and i can zoom further out which is really nice but if you do 
by chance, and this is something that I did when I first got the app, zoom out and then scroll over just a little bit once you're fully zoomed out. This is almost like trying to find a needle in a haystack and you could endlessly be zooming and actually zoom past the piece if you're not over or in the right area. So it is definitely a good idea when you are early into it to make a save point. That way you can hop back to it and definitely don't lose any large amounts of work. The other thing that I feel like this app is currently missing is the ability to have separate save files. So in the endless paper, you just have one file and you can definitely hop around between the different locations. But the issue that I can see in the future, especially with some of the drawings that I've been doing, is that if you draw more detailed drawings that have a lot of points over a long period of time or a lot of drawings, it could definitely cause the app to crash. With that in mind, I think this app can be limiting in the fact that you kind of have to keep the style simplified. And if you are looking for an app to draw realism or even hyper-realism, it is not going to be ideal. One interesting feature that I wish you could actually toggle on and off, but I think it is an interesting feature, is the ability to actually make the brush size larger just by zooming in and out. And I'm not sure if it's a glitch or a feature, but I definitely was able to make the fills a lot easier on this circle versus trying to fill it in. Even with the largest brush size, when you're zoomed in, it seems like it is very small and there is no color dropper or color fill option for this app. The color selector wheel on this app is pretty limited, especially compared to other apps where you can pretty much pick any color. And currently there is not an option to blend colors or even use transparencies to kind of get your own colors or fine tune them. You're just stuck with the flat colors that are on the color wheel. Once you have one artwork completed in the art gallery, you can zoom in, clean up some of the lines, as well as add details, or even add some Easter eggs or hidden images within the images. I'm gonna add a cloud here, the smiley face. And I'm also gonna add in some raindrops. One other thing I wanna point out is if you color in the same spot using different colors and then zoom in, you risk the app glitching out just because I believe this app is using vectors and with vectors, if you draw in the same spot or it has the same point in the same spot, it will actually cause the app to glitch out because it doesn't know which color to show. Sometimes it shows one, sometimes it shows the other, and sometimes it shows neither. So if you want to completely avoid this, you can use the eraser tool first and then draw in the color. But for these, I had pretty good luck and I was able to zoom in a handful of times without it glitching out too bad. One other way of reducing the app from glitching is to use the other brushes that are included. And like I said earlier, there are not a lot of brushes. There's actually only a total of four brushes and if you take out the one that is pressure sensitive, it's just the three. And they pretty much are just different line weights. So it really turns into a line drawing app. And not really ideal for somebody looking to draw full color images. On top of the fact that the brushes are lacking in quantity, they also have a really weird selector in the interface for changing the size of the brushes. And for the most part, it does not make sense, especially for the eraser. You basically have an option of a small brush to massive and nothing really in between. And on top of it, if you hit parts of what you've colored in with a larger brush, it typically will erase large areas that are kind of random and kind of like a glitch. And I think this just has to do with the fact that it is erasing points on the vector. And when it does this, it just erases the whole section rather than just the little spot. This can make it really difficult even to make a small change to a large picture without having to go back in and reconstruct parts of the image that get erased on accident. And the last feature that I think is pretty cool that this app is capable of doing is adding any image from your photo gallery. All you need to do is go split screen with your photo gallery, then open up and go to a place where you'd like to place the image and zoom in. I'm gonna place it inside of the eye of the cloud here and I'm just gonna press and hold and then drag the picture that I want to add. Now this here is gonna be somewhat transparent and I can zoom in and zoom out this is actually gonna change the size of the frog if I zoom in and zoom out right near the center of the frog. And this part of zooming in out versus changing the size of the image can be a little finicky, but you really have to zoom in very close to change the size of the image. And then if you put your fingers a little bit further out, it ends up changing the size or zooming in out of the paper. Once you have the image sized and placed, you can zoom in to the actual picture and you can actually see the pixels on this. And the reason why this has pixels and the app typically doesn't is because the app is using vectors 
this is a JPEG or maybe a PNG file and it has pixels. So you can actually draw on top of the image or below it, but you can't actually draw on the image. And then the same thing with the image, you're able to place it, but since there's not other layers, you can add other images. And if you do, you can then go in and put them to the back or to the front. So the app has a better way of displaying it. But that being said, right now it actually is glitching because there are two colors, the light blue and the dark blue in the same area. And the app, depending on when you zoom in and zoom out, doesn't know which one to display. So when this happens, the best way to fix it is just erase the area with any markers or colors that have been colored and try and recolor it in and see if that fixes it. And I did that here and now I'm going to actually take the image and there's an option to duplicate the image. And I'm going to go ahead and do this a few times, but this is how you can get repeating images and be able to keep zooming into the same image over and over. So once again here, the zooming in and resizing of the image can be very finicky. And it definitely helps if you have multiple to lock one. So I locked the larger one and then resize the smaller one that did help, but it still can be a little bit tricky. And it just takes kind of zooming in slower and just a little bit of patience. But I was able to get a few of these in a row. And sometimes depending on the image file, how big it is and how you place it, it can also cause the app to crash. So I definitely recommend if you are planning on doing a repeating image to only do a handful of these, maybe three or four. So once I had three of them in place, I had a good kind of repeating image and I was able to zoom all the way out and it definitely gives a really cool effect. That about wraps up my infinite drawing art gallery tutorial. My overall review for the Endless Paper app, based on some of the issues and glitches mentioned earlier in the video, is that I cannot recommend this app as a drawing or digital painting app, just because there are other apps out there that are either free or Procreate that is available that has a robust set of brushes as well as a lot of other options and features that are just not available in this app. That being said, Procreate and the other art apps that I have used in the past are pixel based and they will not infinitely zoom. So if you are looking for an infinite zoom program, this definitely does it. However, there are other vector based zoom apps that may be able to handle this. That being said, I haven't tried them yet. And if you do know of any apps that are zoom and vector base that you want me to try and compare against this app just to see how it compares in the infinite zoom category let me know that in the comment section down below hopefully this video answered any questions that you might have about the app and finding out if it is right for you if you do have any other questions let me know down below and if you did enjoy this video make sure to give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe and turn on post notifications for my newest videos and tutorials and until next time peace